Oh, yeah. Just checking a few things and then we're good to go. All right, guys. So basically, I'm just going to do the question B first, all right? Now, when you guys have a look at this question B, you've got number 27 and then you've got 81 there. Okay? So the first step is to actually get rid of the 27 and 81 because you know that uh, 27 could be written as 3 to the power of 3 and 81 could be written as 3 to the power of 4. All right? So once you do that, then what you can do is replace 27 with 3 to the power of 3 and that's going to be to the power of px equals 81 which is 3 to the power of 4 and then that's going to be 4 minus x. Yeah? So all I've done is, there's my 27 right there. I've replaced it with 3 to the power of 3. And uh, 81 is now replaced with 3 to the power of 4. So once we do that, we do powers of powers. So we're going to get 3 to the power of 3 times px equals 3 to the power of 4. But make sure you put 4 minus x in a bracket. All right, and I think once you do that, you actually end up with 3 to the power of 3px equals 3 to the power of 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times negative x is negative 4x. Ooh, we're really having fun now, aren't we, with this? So once you do that, um, our next thing, I just realized what's happening here. So what we then have is, um, because we've got two bases that are the same, we can actually get rid of it. So we can get rid of the two threes, and we can rewrite this as 3px equals 16 minus 4x. Is that all right? And now, because we're trying to make x the subject, so what we're going to do is um, bring all the x's together. So we got 3px plus 4x and then that's equal to 16. All right? So we want to make x the subject, so that means we want to actually have x by itself. Uh, and what you can see is that x is the common factor. So we actually take out x as a common factor. We're going to take it out. And what we have is 3p plus 4 equals 16. And then from there, we can now write x by itself, which is going to be 16 divided by... 3p plus 4. Is that all right? Cool. So, do you guys want another question like B, or do you want to actually have a go at A? A? You want to have a go at A? Yeah, A, a is a good question to have a go at, so... Oh, yeah. There we go. So with question A, I think um, what you kind of need to realize with question A is, um, just give me a second. You've actually got to be using logs for that, right? Without logs, that question is going to be quite challenging because if you look at the bases, the bases are two different letters. You've got A and B. You know, you can't really do anything with that. Uh, and the powers, not really, you can't do anything with it because one is x plus one, the other one is 2x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take logs for both sides. And we're going to rewrite this as log a to the power of x plus one equals log b to the power of 2x. And once we do that, you guys should remember this, one of the rules here. So if you have something like this, log log of a to the power of b could be written as b times log of a. It's one of the log rules. So we're going to use that and we're literally going to move the power to the front of the logs. So this now is going to be rewritten as x plus 1 multiplied by log a equals 2x log b. Are we okay with that so far? Yeah? 
Now the next step is we are still trying to make x the subject. So we've actually got to figure out a way to expand this bracket here, which is x plus 1. So if you think about it, we just use our normal expanding rules. So x times log a and 1 times log a. So x times log a is going to be x log a. And then 1 times log a is going to be 1 log a. And all of this is equal to 2x log b. Now we're trying to make x the subject. So that means bring all the x's to one side, get rid of everything else that we don't want on the other side. So I'm going to rewrite this as log a equals 2x log b minus have I got something missed there? No, that's all fine. Yeah, minus x log a. And here you can see that x is a common factor. So I can actually take x out as a common factor. And I'm going to end up with log a equals x bracket 2 log b minus log a. And now it's just rearranging it. So x is there by itself. And I've got log a divided by 2 log b minus log a. Okay. Now, really important at this point that you actually don't do something like this. And I have seen people do this. They go and cancel out the 2 log a's. All right. Please don't do that because... That means you're not, you're not uh, how do I say, it? that's not the right way of uh, cancelling out the log a's in this case. Alright, so we just leave that as your final answer. Are we okay? Yep. Oh, you're talking about um, yeah. this line here. Yeah. Yeah. So what he's talking about is doing something like this. So when you have x log a plus log a equals 2x log b. So if you divide it by 2x, then you have to divide everything by 2x. And what ends up happening is that you've actually got... Yeah, you end up creating a really uh, nasty looking equation. Oh, well, yeah, it's still, it's still solvable, but it's just a bit more, just a bit more work. Definitely a bit more work. Because what happens is your x disappears here, and now you've got a x in the denominator. So it just can get really complicated really quickly. Okay? So, yep, sweet. Thank you for that. Another question like this? Because I think we only got... Uh, Oh, great. We only got like a few more minutes before we got to run off. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'll give you guys a similar question. No, that was from 2015. Since we're doing make rearranging X as the subject, I'll give you guys one more question. So this is question C. I would like you guys to try this one here. So you want to make x the subject for this question here as well. Uh, this would actually be a merit question, but the previous question, the question A that we did was an excellence. But both of those other questions that we did were definitely merits. So I'm just mindful of time, guys. That's why I'm um, keeping a real quick one here. All right, I'm going to slowly start working on this one at the moment. So what you can do is you can cross multiply in this because you've got one fraction equals another fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 multiplied by 3x 
equals 2 multiplied by y multiplied by x minus 2. And when I do this, I get 12x equals 2y times x minus 2. 12x equals, I've got to expand the brackets, which means I'm getting 2yx minus 4y. And just like before, we always try and bring x's together because that's what we're trying to make the subject. So we're going to rewrite this as 12x minus 2yx equals negative 4y. And once again, we can see that uh, x is a common, uh, common factor. So take out x as a common factor. And what you have is 12 minus 2y equals negative 4y and then x is equal to negative 4y divided by 12 minus 2y All right, guys, um, that's basically it for this um, little tutorial session. What, what we'll do is um, we are going to run another one. Check the, um, the, the tutorial calendars. But, um, yeah, I will be running an algebra one. So I'm basically running all the algebra tutorials for the next few weeks. So any questions on that so far? But, yeah, I've got some more questions. I actually wanted to do a one-hour tutorial. But, uh, yeah, because of assembly, I had to cut it short. Okay, thanks for coming. I'll just, that's no, all right, I'll just switch it off. Give me one second.